<laughs> so what song is there that every Jamaican can sing? I fled my heart's island to serve with Tom <laughs> we're Ron and Don Brody, first generation Jamaicans. When we were little, our parents would bring us to Jamaica to learn about our heritage. You think this one is good? Yeah! Now, we're back to navigate our own route, with help from local drivers along the way. This is Driver Radio, Jamaica. In 1970, our parents migrated to America, leaving Jamaica behind. When we arrived in New York, it was snowing like crazy. Back then, it was common to leave in search of better opportunities. I had $65, and the taxi man took all of the money just to take us from JFK to Brooklyn. The mission seemed a little bit like a selfish task. We wanted to understand more about where we came from and more about our parents. Where I used to live was New Green, now it's a part of my animal. I've only been there a few times in my life. And then we were going to try and navigate through some of our memories and look for more family. We used to stay in Montego Bay for holidays. The Jamaican family lived there. Growing up, we would skateboard, we'd bleach our hair, we'd play loud music and punk rock. We weren't Jamaican enough. Our inlet was meeting a lot of the locals. Real rap in Jamaica, yeah! By the time we were old enough, we befriended taxi drivers, and we'd go down into the hip strip and go look for trouble. They showed us our country and our culture. The mission? Retrace a former route from Kingston to Mandeville, then forward into Montego Bay. At this point, we typically radio for a driver, but for this adventure, we thought we'd try something different. It's a longer journey, so we decided that we would try the local bus. It felt like a more authentic way of looking at the people that create this lovely island. Frederick, why you look so pop star, huh? You walk through my set, you know we're rolling camera. To get us started, we enlisted the help of a local bus conductor named Bubba. They call the conductors. But to call herself cashier. A conduct bus and a hustle in the street, loading bus and them things. We went to go and look for Bubba up at Stony Hill a little while back, just to kind of pick his brain a little bit about how this was all going to be possible. The vibes bring the money. So if I don't have no vibes, it's like you're dead, you're locked. You know, we Jamaicans, we know about the system, so we can manage the clean and all these stuff. Foreigners will probably think it's kind of epic, you know what I mean? Yeah. Although Stony Hill seemed like a bustling stop, Kingston's bus park was on a whole nother level. Stony Hill itself no really have a bus terminus, you know. Is it? And we make it a terminus. Kingston bus park, different. You know, so you have all different type of bus to Mandeville, bus to St. Thomas, bus to Montego Bay. There are no bus numbers. They have their routes printed on some of the buses. But some of them you can only tell by the way they look, you know, the color they are, the flashy ornaments, how you can recognize it from afar. And then when you get closer, you can see that it's your route. Most of the drivers that I drive now was first conductors themselves. You see, but nobody now see at one stage for too long. Everybody want to move up the ladder, you know what I mean? For our first leg, we need to find a bus headed from Kingston to Mandeville. My name. <laughs> Most people call me Richie. Why? Because of Richie Ranks. That's an artist name. Every bus is a different operator. I'm a trendsetter, not a follower. But what I do, I create my thing. Father, in the most precious time, dear God, we thank you again and we honor you, we glorify your name. As you said, no weapon that farm against your children shall prosper. Be the driver for us. Tighten up every note on every board upon this vehicle. As you took us out safely, bring us to a respectable destination. We surrender it all unto you as we go with you. In Jesus Christ's name we say, Amen. Have a blessed morning and thanks again, yeah? You can release your window for me now, please and thanks. This is a way of self-exploration. 
We just wanted to experience it, maybe how our parents might have experienced it. When you really go out on trips, you guys really enjoy that type of thing. One time in my life, I had to take a bus from Kingston to Mandeville. And for me, the experience squeeze up on them things. Eh? You sit down until your foot them get weary after when they come out, if you have a shake out your legs, eh? you know what I mean? So right now, I'm not thinking about go back the road. Eh? It's just a journey for Chad. Yes, sir. Yeah. But me have a Chad here, I'm not left, my God. Yes, Boy, remember, it's a journey for Chad. I'm Chad like Moses with my Bible as my rod. And we wait to Mandeville, non-stop straight. Bon June! We look for you again, huh? This is, this is yeah, yeah, yeah. reliable ride. Right. With a great yeah, group of people. Yeah, yeah. Mandeville was a space I loved, man. It's got a heartbeat to it. I had distant memories of traveling through that area when we were kids. I could barely even remember. We were so young. When you go to the top of the hill, you have straight ahead a post office. I don't know if they changed that. And to the right of that, there was an Anglican church or some big church there. Depending on where you're standing, one thing will be to one side and the other side is to Kingston. Just kind of picturing my father hanging outside of the gas station, you know, a local disco there. You feel energy. It just feels cooler than everywhere else. My father was a minister. He was from his honor and everybody knew him. Sometimes we'd put on a pair of pants and cut one leg shorter than the other and chase us about the house. <laughs> we'd make a open eyes and run all over the place like we might. That's the same way I do things with you guys. Shortly after our father left Jamaica, our grandfather passed away. He had a church on the hillside that overlooked this red river. I remember I cried for my father because I was in New York at the time I couldn't travel. If we had gone back home or whatever, I'm pretty sure we wouldn't get our visa to come back home to Jamaica. We never have the chance to meet our grandfather in person. When I went up the hillside, that side right before me, and I would the glass from around this grave. Dear Lord watching over us, we come into town to visit Grandpa for him to hear our message. We're grateful that we have you watching over us. What you've passed on to our father has now been manifest into the two of us. Thank you, Reverend Wilbert S. Brody, we love you. Hey, Dad, guess where we are? Where? We're in Mandeville, Dad. Okay, you went to Papa Green? Yeah, man, he said, tell Don Birdie and all family, he said hi. Oh, man, I tell you, he, that's exactly what he said. He was telling us. <laughs> <laughs> time. What is time? Everybody all right? Time waits on no man, you know. We sat on the bus for about three hours, waiting for the bus to load. This piece of rain just didn't let up at all. So the rain affect the bus system totally. The less people travel, the people are more uncomfortable because people wet up and come and touch them. People more miserable. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's literally one and ready, and then you're about to leave. The next leg of the mission was from Mandeville to Montego Bay. We used to drive through Bamboo Walk for about a mile. You had all the bamboos forming like a tent over the road. It would be so pretty. You would go that way to get to Montego Bay. My father was a headmaster. He moved from school to school in the country. I was about 11 years old when he died. I was transferred to Kingston to go to school. My dad and Donnie got married and they came to live in Montego Bay. The following year, David was born. I got the call from Leon to say that I must meet you at Pier 1. I was like, how's the region? And Leon said, they're coming down by the bus. So, okay, they're gonna get our experience. 
We do not erase any footage by any means. How you doing, sir? I'm filming a documentary, sir. Where are you from, sir? New York. Um, right now, this parish is under a heightened state of emergency. You know if this I mean? was the States, we'd be in trouble. <laughs> we would be like, yes, sir. No, sir. Yes, sir. We were worried about reaching Mo Bay and being able to link with our cousins. Yeah. Montego Bay by eight. When we come back to Jamaica, the objective is to visit family. When we landed in Montego Bay, we felt home. Growing up, that was a big time in the life when the twins are born. <laughs> Everywhere there was family, they spent time. <laughs> Seeing Leanne and David, we ran up on them. I felt so accomplished. I just had to give my cousin a big hug. Getting pulled over in a country that's run by black people is a pleasant experience. <laughs> yeah, it's totally different. Growing up, you guys were so far from Jamaica. And to see that you guys come back so in love with Jamaica, it's so heartwarming. This is the biggest love letter to my mom and dad to say thank you. Hey, Hi, mom. Hey, hey. Yeah, we found everybody. It looks like that there's no Jamaica now. <laughs> <laughs> I told mom we were okay. When are you coming back? I don't know. But we love you. <laughs> and there's a lot more to see. It's not over. Jamaica can done. The trip continues. Look at all these chickens. All roots lead home in Jamaica. That's our heritage. And just like navigating all complex things, we kind of don't want to be on camera managing the route takes practice. This was just practice. And so we say, forward a yacht, we soon come. There's even more to discover. Until then, continue to scan the radio waves. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs>